So, what does the word eco mean to you? Get ready for Eco Means, the only TV show where you'll learn how to become more eco-friendly while taking small steps towards living a greener lifestyle. Hello and welcome to the first episode of Eco Means. I'm your host, Casey Smith, and I'll be guiding you through each episode. So, what does the word eco mean to you? If you're unsure, eco means is here to help sort it all out for you. We'll be covering a wide variety of topics to help you go green, live smarter and wiser while saving money and helping out the environment. We encourage you to follow us on our website, ecomeans.com, where we have additional information, industry links, and resources. You'll also find our Facebook, blog, and Twitter linked on the site. We hope you enjoy the show and learn a little something along the way. On this first episode, we will be discussing the controversial topic of consuming raw milk. There are many different opinions about raw milk, so we wanted to give you the facts and let you generate your own opinion. Our goal is simple. We want to educate you, the consumer, on a subject to help you make your own informed decision that's best for you and your family. We hope we can help you with that. We're going to start off with a tour of Sunnywald Natural Foods, a local distributor of raw milk and thousands of organic and nutritional products. And here we are at Sunnywald Natural Foods in Stoverstown, Pennsylvania for today's Organic Corner. Welcome to Sunnywald Natural Foods. We've been in business for over 50 years. Come on in. We're really fortunate that here in Pennsylvania, we have the opportunity to, to sell raw milk and, and to use raw milk. You know, it is a somewhat controversial, but if you look back in history, our ancestors, I mean, going way back, everything was raw. And certainly it does have to be handled properly. And here again, you know, knowing the farm where your food comes from gives you that peace of mind that uh, these things are being done properly and so on. We always give out a lot of information or at least display a lot of information. I really love this raw milk brochure that just helps people understand, well, what does pasteurization do? Okay, and what are the pros and cons of that? What does homogenization do? You know, is the fat in milk bad? And, you know, I just, as I mentioned, there's so much um, misinformation or maybe incomplete information. So we just encourage people. We're not here to tell anybody what to do. We always say that's God's job. You know, but what we try to do is give people uh, information, encourage them to do their own reading, to do their own research. But many, many families have found that they're, they do well. I mean, the children thrive, the adults thrive using the raw milk, especially when the cows are fed grass. You know, here's part of the problem. When we feed cows, you know, soybeans and corn and other types of products, there are, their digestive systems were made to eat grass. So when we feed cows or we uh, give them um, access to good pasture, they produce good milk. Well, what an interesting store Willa has. We'll be continuing that tour on our next episode. But in the meantime, fasten your seatbelts as we have a little fun on a fast tour of Sunnywald Natural Foods to give you a glimpse of what's coming up next time. Today we're visiting with Maureen Diaz, who is an advocate for raw milk. Maureen has nine children and has her own family cow. 
Maureen will discuss how raw milk has become part of everyday life for her and her family and the benefits she's seen from drinking raw milk. So Maureen, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to show us how everything works around your farm, teaching me how to milk, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> and um, the first thing I want to start talking about is something you touched on in the kitchen when you were straining the milk. Um, explain to us a little bit how you got into living this lifestyle and how you got your start in, in making raw milk and, and producing everything you, you do on, on this farm. Okay. Well, to begin with, I've always had a real keen interest in natural foods and natural healing. So um, I spent many years researching, reading everything I could get my hands on before there was an Internet. Um, attending conferences. I uh, just intuitively knew that whatever food we ate should be in its most crude basic form. Um, uh, the less processed the better. And I realized at some point in time that that had to include milk as well. And so we began purchasing raw milk from a conventional farm, which is not something that I recommend. And then we purchased our own family cow, our first cow from another friend. Um, I've come to the definite conclusion that healthy people should be able to consume raw milk. And people who are not healthy can generally improve dramatically with the consumption of raw milk. Um, in some cases, it needs to be strictly cultured, as in yogurt or kefir, um, until a person retains their health. But raw milk is a very health-giving food. It's a nutrient-dense food, and it's full of very beneficial things such as enzymes and proteins that will actually build human health, starting from the gut. What would you say to the people who argue against drinking raw milk? What are some of the benefits that science has shown? Well, let's start with one really basic and important thing. There are two raw milks. There's raw milk that's meant for pasteurization that comes from a conventional farm, and there's raw milk that's coming from a grass-based farm, a nice clean operation that's meant for human consumption straight from the cow. So they're two totally different classes of milk. Completely different. Okay. Completely different. I always say you are what you eat and what you eat eats. When you're consuming milk that comes from a dairy that the cattle are all in a barn and they're fed silage and cotton seed meal and soybean meal, those are not natural foods for a ruminant animal. Mm -hmm. And those foods acidify the rumen, giving rise to pathogenic organisms. Now, in grass-fed raw milk, there are many components of that milk. There are lactoferrins and there are enzymes. There are many different proteins that actually will destroy or disable pathogens. Uh, Mark McAfee from Organic Pastures in California tests his milk every single batch, every single day, and he posts the, uh, the test results on his website. One of the things that he did was intentionally inoculate raw milk with different pathogenic organisms to see what would happen. And he saw that over 12 and 24 hours, those pathogens were greatly diminished or destroyed by the naturally occurring proteins in the raw milk. Wow. So, well, just think what that does in your body then. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Um, raw milk can help heal people of things like Crohn's disease and diverticulitis and many other things, cancers. I've heard many people talk about being healed of cancer largely by consuming good pasture-based raw milk. Wow, that's a, that's a big... A big statement That's a, to make. It's a big statement, and it happens over and over and wow. over again. <laughs> I stared at this glass of milk. I will preface this by saying I am a huge milk drinker. <laughs> huge. I'm a little afraid of this milk. I'm not going to lie to you, but I'm going to try it. Our, our producer tried it, and he said it was really, really good, so I trust <laughs> him. So... Were you scared your first time you drank it? Absolutely not. <laughs> no, I wasn't. You know, I realized, and, and just think about this. People have been consuming this for thousands of years, for almost all of human history. True. All right, let's go. Let's do it. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> it is good. There. I feel stronger already. <laughs> there we go. Fight off any disease. <laughs> Keeps your skin beautiful. <laughs>
<laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for hosting us on your farm. It's been a really eye-opening experience for me, I know, yeah. and, and, and I really appreciate all the uh, input you've given us today. Well, I enjoyed it very much. So <laughs> thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I know I sure learned a lot from Maureen, and the milk wasn't too bad either. Well now, before we move on to our next segment, I want to take some time to show you our product of the week. We're going to be doing this from episode to episode to give you an idea about different types of products you can buy that will help you save money and live a greener lifestyle. Today's product is something you can find at any local hardware store. It's very inexpensive. It's only $20, depending on the model, and you can save up to $50 per year per surge protector you use in your house. The difference with this energy saving surge protector, unlike a typical surge protector, is that you can choose what appliances stay on all the time and those that do not. If you have your master outlets plugged in, these will stay on. So you don't have to worry about them shutting off, losing power, uh, losing electricity. Now, if you plug something into one of the green outlets here, you can choose whether these use electricity or not. So say I have my TV plugged in, I have my DVD, my stereo, and my Xbox plugged in. If I turn off my TV, all three of these outlets shut down, which saves energy and saves money. So if you have a product you'd like us to take a look at, send it in to ecomeans.com and we'll see if we can feature it. But now, let's take a look at a tour we did at a local creamery that produces raw milk. Well, we've already talked to a consumer who taught us all about the benefits of drinking raw milk, but we were interested in finding out how it's actually made. So we came here today to the Apple Valley Creamery in East Berlin, Pennsylvania, just to find out. Cows are surprisingly intelligent and intuitive animals, which they showed us as they filed in for their daily milking at Apple Valley Creamery. We found it amazing that the cows seemed to know their job as if being directed. They walked right in, lined up, and entered the stalls six at a time, turned facing out and patiently stood to be milked, then walked themselves back to their barn when finished. And we're here in the milking parlor, and they are showing us exactly what goes into the process of milking these cows. An iodine sanitizer that we dip each teat in to clean it up because we don't any bacteria on them. We'll let that on for somewhere between 30 and 60 seconds and then dry it off and attach the milker. Now, do the cows feel any sort of pain when the um, when the tubes are attached to them, or is it? I don't think so. No different than a a, a cat would be. Yeah. Okay. The big thing is all there's milk coming out. If you let the milk run too long, the milk stops flowing, then the vacuum will get. Okay, you probably get painful. Is there usually an amount of time that that lasts, or you just have to look at every cow and know? Uh, well, like you say, there's a sensor on each milker unit. Oh, okay. so keep them from over milking. We also try to watch them. Okay. Hold it out, line it up like that. So now he's hooking up the milking machine to the udder. And collecting the milk through the tube. Easy enough. <laughs> Try to let these hang down some, okay. because if you let air in, it won't actually get a hold. Okay. You'll want it at a time. Alright. Here you go. <laughs> Here in the actual 
creamery part of Apple Valley Creamery, and I am joined by Don. Hello, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for joining us. Don's going to show us around this room and, and tell us a little bit about what actually goes on here, what sort of things you produce here, and how it all works. Okay, well, after the milk leaves the cows in the milking parlor, it gets pumped straight into the tank at the far end of the room. So now we have raw milk at the far end of the room ready to be processed with whatever we're going to do with it. And those large... Yep, so we have the large tank down at the end that fits about 650 gallons of milk. And what we can do is we can either, if we're doing a raw milk, we'll actually take it from that tank and then go right over to our filling equipment and bottle it. So we wait until it's uh, cooled down to less than 40 degrees and that's ready for bottling. And a lot of times that's what we're waiting for. We're waiting for it to be cooled to under 40 and then right away we're getting it in the bottle. So sometimes we have bottled milk that was in the cow only two or three hours before. Now these glass bottles are coming right from our bottle washer. They get cleaned back there, sanitized, and they go right on a uh, conveyor belt to be fed into the uh, filler machine. We are really proud of the glass bottle usage here. It's, it's a bit more expensive to get involved and set up and started with, but once we get started, uh, it's, I just think it's a great way to uh, save trash going to the landfill. Even Though plastic bottles can get recycled, this is even, in my opinion, more green because all we have to do is wash them and run them right through again and fill them up with milk. They say you can get about 40 uses out of a glass bottle before it'll wear out, the ink will come off, or it'll break or something. So, As you can see, we just fill simply two at a time here. They go up uh, due to air pressure. The system knows when the bottle's filled and it just automatically stops. That little bounce you see at the end is just to try to help get out any of the little air bubbles that might be there. And then uh, gets capped with our capping machine, then stomp down. Then Amy's here and she just baits them. We do a 12-day sell-by on the raw milk. There's actually no regulation in the state of Pennsylvania on it. I was just telling about the sell-by date. It's interesting with uh, raw milk, it doesn't go bad like a pasteurized product would. Raw milk over time will slightly sour, so some people will get that sour milk and as soon as it gets the slightest taste of souring, they think, oh, I can't take it, and they, they get rid of it. Other people will drink it weeks after the sell-by and they say, oh, that's just all, that reminds me of my childhood. Whereas pasteurized milk, when it goes bad, it turns more what I call putrid, in which case you don't want to drink that if it smells or starts going bad, but raw milk sours, whereas uh, pasteurized milk would just get more putrid. And of course with raw milk, it's, there's all sorts of different bacteria in there and they're just kind of fighting each other and keeping themselves at bay. And, uh, and a lot of people claim that that's safer for you because with a pasteurized product, it's kind of like making a, a Petri dish for you, where all of a sudden now, if something was introduced to that product, it just takes off in the product. And, you know, if you had Listeria introduced, it would just take off in the whole pasteurized product. Whereas with raw milk, of course, we test to make sure there's not Listeria in it, but if some a little bit they get in, there's other bacteria in there, they're all kind of fighting each other, and it doesn't just take off and make the whole product uh, bad immediately. <laughs> so that's raw milk. Raw milk would be the easiest from a processing point of view to do. Uh, then if we're going to do some one of our pasteurized products, we'll have to start using some of that equipment down there. If we're doing a chocolate milk, we'll put it in the corner tank, we'll mix in the chocolate powder, the sugar, and now we're ready to feed it to the pasteurizer, which is uh, that piece of equipment right there and kind of in the middle. Mm -hmm. about uh, 15 feet down. Mm -hmm. And the pasteurizer, all it simply does is heat and cools the milk. So we'll heat it up to 100, about 165 degrees for fifth, a minimum of 15 seconds, and we cool it right back down to uh, less than 40 degrees. And what does that accomplish? And what that does, if there's any bacteria or anything in the milk, it's, uh, it's going to kill all that, most of that, and then it, uh, it'll give the shelf life of the product a little bit longer. Okay. So where our raw milk, we put a 12-day sell-by on. With our pasteurized products, we're putting a 17-day sell-by on. Okay, great. And then we also, at that option, uh, at that spot, we have the option if we're making a skim milk. We run it over to the cream separator, take all the cream out, and leave uh, just the skim milk portion. We also have a homogenizer down there where we can homogenize it, which is simply putting the milk under high pressure, and you just break the fat particles up. So instead of them all floating to the top, like in raw milk, now they stay in suspension throughout the product, so you don't have to shake the bottle before you drink it. Nice. But after that, then it goes into one of these tanks to be uh, held and uh, weighted. And we wait until we're ready to bottle, and then it goes right uh, over to our filling equipment again, ready to be bottled. Send it right off to the customers. That's right. All That's right. right. 
Now, you just explained to us the process of how you get the milk from the cow to the customer. Yeah. What other products besides milk does Apple Valley Creamery okay. make? Besides uh, the fluid milk that we put in the bottles, we also make butter from our cream. We just simply put that in a butter churn, churn that, and out comes the butter and buttermilk. We separate them out and sell the butter. And then uh, we also make ice cream here, which is, uh, we just have an ice cream churn, which is actually, actually right behind me. And we just turn that ice cream mix in there, add our flavoring or, you know, any inclusions such as, you know, nuts for butter pecan or strawberries for the strawberry ice cream. And uh, as it churns it, it freezes it, comes out in a cup, and then we put that out ready to go for uh, sale in either our dipping cabinet or uh, by the pint in our stores. Today we've played with cows, we've milked cows, we've drank raw milk, we've drank milk that was not raw. Um, we've talked to experts about the benefits of drinking raw milk and experts about the entire milk production process. I think we've learned a lot and I'm so glad you joined us on this first episode. If you're ever in East Berlin, Pennsylvania, be sure to stop by the Apple Valley Creamery and say hi. Well, I learned a lot today and I hope you have too. Many of you, like me, might have thought that raw milk wasn't even sold anymore. But many states do allow the sale of raw milk and we bet that many more will soon. We encourage you to do your research, so go to our website and get started. But now, let's take our email question of the week. Today we have an email question from Jim S. in Georgia. Jim asks us, what are some of the benefits of solar energy? Great question, Jim. Aside from the obvious answer of producing your own green energy, one of the other benefits of solar panels is that they are extremely reliable. There's no moving parts, so you don't have to worry about replacing anything. In fact, most people can generate electricity for thousands of hours with little to no maintenance. We'll be covering this in a later episode, so be sure to look out for it. Thanks again for writing us, Jim. If you have a question, go to ecomeans.com and send it to us. If we choose your question to go on the air, we'll send you an EcoMeans t-shirt. Well, thanks for watching our first episode. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Stay tuned for another great episode of Eco Means. But until then, I'm Casey Smith signing off. We'll see you next time. <laughs>